Okay, today we're going to look at a workflow that introduces you to electroforming if you're really new. So if you got my electroforming ink recipe and you got the electroforming um, solution recipe and you mix those two together, get it all going, this is a nifty little project for if you're new to electroforming, it's a very easy project and it requires you to go out in nature and get some supplies and then electroform those supplies up. So this is tree bark with a crystal mounted on it. Okay, so this workflow will show you step by step the process and using this process, it's the same process over and over again. You're always electroforming your organics at a very couple microns and then mounting whatever you want on them or to another object and then electroforming the whole object. So I'll show you that workflow in this video. All right, so this first part of the workflow, I'm just stripping off some copper wire. So this is 14 gauge stranded wire. And once I peel the coating off of this, just took an X-Acto knife and ran it right up the side. And right about there is what I want. Cool. Separate these into little bits of wire. I got these pieces of tree bark. Gonna put that right there. Some super glue. Bob Smith super glue. Baking soda. Just like that. And I put that to the side to dry. I have a whole bunch of those over on my other side. I got this one. I got this one. So now I have to go electroform them. All right, so my next stage is to dip them in electroforming paint, conductive paint. The formula for this conductive paint is in the video or the link below if you are interested in it. It's specially formulated for electroforming organics. Okay, so piece of bark, lowered in, swoosh it around a little bit. And that's it. Then you let that dry. Um, for more detail, you can just blow it off a little bit. And what that will do, it will remove some of the stuff out of the cracks and crevices, the extra. And how thin you actually mix this equals the amount of detail that you get. Those get hung up on these little wires, so just basically have a little hook and probably about 20 minutes later I'll use them. The thing that you see this is an electric magnetic stir so there's a little pill on the inside of here and every once in a while I will stir this. So after about 15 minutes, 
the pieces are then lowered into a bath of electroforming solution into a tank. And then clipped to the rail so they don't float. If you're interested in the electroforming solution, there's a link below on how to make that and how to make the tank. All right, so after you have a very, 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 very thin deposit of copper, that's when you have to pull it out of the solution. Trim this. Find yourself one of the many jump rings that you swear that you just made. Ah, there's one. So, jump ring. Again, this. To decide what you want as the top. Super glue with baking soda. Then another layer of super glue. And then your jump ring. And then one more layer of super glue, just to blend it all together. And you jump baking soda again, so that you get something that looks like that. Now, while you're at this stage, you can decide, well, do I want to put some kind of crystal on it? What do I want to decorate it with? And depending on what you have, I have a piece of lapis here. So, yeah, that one looks better. So, what I'm going to do is decide, and this piece of lapis has been coated with this. Rock top coat, amazing stuff, really. And I'll say, well, right about here. I'll add that to the situation. and anything else I want to add to it. Cool. So I'll let that dry and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright, this next stage is a different form of electroforming paint. This is an acrylic based or a glue based. It's not a solvent based. It's a 50% Mod Podge, 50% graphite and a little bit of water just to keep it thin so you can see how it runs off of a tongue depressor. Cool. We'll just end up stirring that up. In this case I have a few of these already made up. So you just end up, I use a brush that's very long tapered that way I can get underneath the stone. And all I'm doing here is blending the two surfaces with this paint. And this paint is sort of watery. That way it gets in all the cracks and crevices, but maintains the detail.
And this is just a placeholder for copper. So it's not really the paint or the glue that's holding this crystal on there. It is going to be copper. This is just a placeholder for that copper to be deposited on. So you do want to paint a little bit onto the stone so that it forms this hook around the crystal. And anywhere that super glue was, we paint that. Now this glue or this conductive paint does not eat super glue or the solvent base for the dipping process that I showed you earlier that will eat super glue. This one does not. So it's important to have both variations of conductive paint. The one is good for dipping and really good for organics or overall entire surfaces where this would be made for painting over the top of super glue or anything that gets eaten by solvents. Cool. Now we just let that dry. That one takes about 20 to 30 minutes. So I have to paint a few of these. Alright, see you in the next step. Alright, so after the electroforming paint dries and everything, they are lowered back into the bath. And this time, they're going to be in there for a little bit longer uh, until the copper has grown around the crystal enough to secure it into place. Alright, so once you get the level of detail you want, um, I wanted to preserve a little bit of detail here. And just enough so that it actually covers over the crystal. As you can see that lip, and that holds the crystal into place. So that's what I'm kind of aiming for there. I'm also aiming for the fact that I don't see anything instructionally bad about the clip. So once I get to that point and they're all ready, I just dip them in liver of sulfur and I might just leave them there for 15-20 minutes. So the liver of sulfur will turn it all black or gunmetal gray and rinse it off with water and let it dry. After it's fully dry, this is um, one of these steel brushes and you can see that this one's kind of a wide and this one's kind of a narrow. And how you achieve this is you take the brush and just brush it against the file using a Dremel. So in this case I would have like a file and if I want to shape this Keep it like this. That will shape my brush. And this I'm just kind of glancing it every once in a while.
Then I'll switch over to the other brush. And I'll work on highlights. And then when I'm done with that, I'll use steel wool. Steel wool, zero, 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 zero size, quadruple zero. Works really good for bringing out the highlights. And copper. At this point, you could be really rough with these necklaces because they are very sturdy. Don't worry about breaking them at all. And you can see the level of detail you get. Good times. Alright, and here's the other little examples. Love them. Very natural looking. So it's got all the texture from the bark still. Uh, these two are sage trees. I'm not sure what the other was. But a very easy little workflow that kind of shows you the power of uh, the conductive ink and the electroforming solution all wrapped up in one little tiny project that's very easy to understand at a you know, like a, maybe a beginning level so enjoy <laughs>